if I were to like list off to you 10 rappers whom have been very like prominent in the past few years, have been coming up, they're only a couple albums into their careers, but they're, they, they look like they're going places, they've been very successful. They're kind of the new age kings. Um, I think Polo G I would put in the conversation. Um, obviously he's not nearly like not gotten near. I mean, he, he did get a number one. Okay. I mean, yeah, rap star was huge. Um, but as a whole, I don't think he's really like, you know, you know, me, you know, he's kind of on that level of Megan Thee Stallion and the baby. I would say Megan Thee Stallion and the baby are two of the biggest artists of the past years, not just in hip hop and all genres. Megan and both of them are massive. Like the, the baby passed Drake and monthly listeners. I like that because I, I mean, I really like the baby. I think he's a really fun artist. Um, so there's, so there's a bunch of guys like Jack Harlow, Megan Thee Stallion, the baby. I might throw Corday into the conversation. Mostly Corday's just been great in quality and the hip hop fans love him. He's not been crazy popular though. Um, there's other guys like, um, uh, oh, Lil Baby, obviously Lil Durk, um, young boy. So there's been a ton of these rappers who've been coming up lately. And one of those guys I would say is Polo G. Um, and honestly speaking, his last two albums I really enjoy. Dial Legend isn't amazing to me, but I enjoy what it is. But I think The Goat, he really came into a sound there and had a very nice sound to it. And a horrible cover, horrible cover art, but really enjoyable sound to it. Really great flows. Um, it, it steered away from being corny, but it was still nice. I, I enjoy what it is. Um, it's been a bit since I've listened to it, though. Maybe I need to give it a second listen. Um, I did review it when it came out. Or not when it came out, but I reviewed it in one of my, like... Um, I think I did, right? Yeah, when I did the videos where it's like I went over all the albums I listened to last month, I, I swear I went over the GOAT. Well, point is I enjoy the GOAT. It's like a B plus. Um, oh, I, I probably mentioned it in my uh, honorable mentions of best albums of 2020. So if you want to see my full thoughts on it, go watch that. Um, as a whole, I really enjoyed that album. It had a fantastic outro too. Wishing for a Hero, fantastic outro. So I really was on board with Polo G. I liked his features, I liked where he was popping up. I wasn't mind blown by him, but I liked what he was. But for some reason, then he just, I don't know what happened, but he totally flopped for me because the moment Epidemic dropped, I heard the track and I was just like, okay, this is kind of lame. But I was like, I was betting at the time that was just going to be kind of a throwaway track. Like, oh, let me just get a track to keep people on board with me. Not going to put this on an album because it's really lame, but you know, just get it out there. Um... So that's how I felt in the track. So I kind of passed it off. It wasn't like a whole thing of, oh no, Polo G is going downhill now. It was just like, a, okay, I don't care. Um, then he put out uh, Give No Fuck, which I thought was pretty bad. But I was also like, okay, maybe it's just, it sounded really cheap. And I was like, okay, it's probably just like a throwout single. Then he dropped Rap Star and I instantly knew, oh no, he's releasing an album with all of these singles on it. Rap Star truly is, I think, where my worries for the next Polo G record really came into scope. Because, oh my god, that, that, that track, uh, it, ju it just killed my confidence for the album. And it's not because it's a terrible song by any means. I'll get into it more in this video um, It's because it's what, on the album. But it just, oh my god, it just, it just didn't hit for me. It just, didn't, it just felt really lame to me. I can't believe it went number one. I'm mind blown it went number one. I almost have the thoughts that it didn't go number one. I'm not going to say Polo G bought the streams. But like... It doesn't have like a really crazy beat. It doesn't have really anything that's banger about it. And on top of that, it's, it has, it doesn't have like a fun, catchy hook. It's not number one material. I don't know why it went number one. It confuses me. Um, it also annoys me because it's so overrated. It's just a boring song to me and it's just really underwhelming for what Polo can do. It's corny, it's lame. It just doesn't work for me. Um, then he dropped Gang Gang, which <laughs> I'll get to it later. Um, but as a whole, everything he announced for this album lowered my confidence for it even less. In fact, ever since he dropped at Rap Star, there's not a thing Polo G has posted or said about this album that's raised my confidence for it. He also dropped his, um, uh, when he said it was 20 tracks, that was obviously a red flag for me because trap albums shouldn't be 20 tracks. It was also kind of a red flag when the title Hall of Fame came up because it hit me, oh my God, he really thinks he's there. He really thinks he's at that point of being one of the greatest. That, uh, that was kind of a big red flag for me. Um, track list came out. I mean, the track list didn't really give me a red flag. It just looked okay to me. Um, and on top of that, one of the big, another big worry I had for this album going in was um, uh, the cover art too. Horrible cover art. Just looks cheap, bad. Reminds me of a Gucci Mane cover art. Um, as a whole, yeah, no, this, yeah, this was worrisome. I was just worried going into this and I was very much expecting something kind of mid. Um, I, I don't know, I just was incredibly, it looked incredibly uninteresting to me. 
Um, thankfully, though, it's only like 54 minutes. I thought it was going to be like an hour or 20 minutes. It's way shorter than that. It's actually way shorter than Culture 3, surprisingly. Um, it, we'll just get into this album. It opens with the track Painting Pictures, which set a horrible standard for the album because that is a horrible opening. It's not like, okay, it's not like mind-blowingly awful. It's not like unlistenable, but it's just really badly done. The flow doesn't sound that great. Polo G's rapping is very corny. I'm going to say the word corny a lot in this video. Um, I'll try and switch it up and say cringy or hard to take seriously. I'll try that, but mostly speaking, this album is kind of corn. Um, this track, he just doesn't flow very nicely over it. It's, but also it's just the production. It just sounds so messy to me. It just doesn't sound finished. And on top of that, it literally just ends out of the blue. Like on like a note, it ends on a note. And that's horrible. Like, like that's really bad mixing. That's mixing I could fix in 30 seconds. And I don't know why it's on here. From someone who Polo G, someone like Polo G, who I know has dedication to music, it sounds pretty bad. Like I mentioned, Rap Star is the next track. It doesn't really work for me. It has kind of, it's just kind of weak to me. It just doesn't have really anything interesting to me. It's just cheesy, lame. Yeah, I really could just skip on this one. No Return actually has a kind of okay beat. I kind of like the beat, but I think Polo's way too aggressive on it because I've realized this. Pol aggressive Polo G doesn't really work. It just it just brings him into a more cheesy territory. Um, he just, he, it's just hard to take him seriously with his vocal set being really aggressive. Um, the Kid Leroy ruins the hook. He does not sound good at all. And I'm not someone who like hates the Kid Leroy. I don't like him at all, but I don't hate him like some people. But man, he, he's just not good on it. Um, Lil Durk is nice because he's Lil Durk, but that's kind of it though. This track is kind of a mess. Toxic is admittedly kind of a highlight. I like what it is. Um, it has a good beat. Polo has a pretty nice flow over it. He glides over it kind of well. It's not great, but I, it, I'll take what I can get from this album. Like I mentioned earlier, Epidemic um, is just kind of unoriginal and boring. Just I don't see why we needed to hear it. It doesn't have anything about it that really strikes me as anything more than just okay. Um, then we have Gang Gang. Um, Lord, Lord have mercy. I don't know why this is a track. This track makes me physically angry. Um, it's not even like an angering track in that bad way. The beat isn't like horrible. Okay, the beat's pretty awful. Um, it's just terribly mixed. Like who decided that those like weird chime sounds, it's apparently a, a, a Jay Dilla sample. I don't know why they picked a Jay Dilla sample it doesn't sound good for a track called Gang Gang. It's just, the flow just sounds all just mess. The beat just sounds so lame to me. It just doesn't work at all. Polo doesn't flow nicely over it. I like Wayne on it, okay. Wayne's had better features, honestly, in the past. He's had way better features, but it's nice. But yeah, no, this just, just the beat, man. The beat is so badly mixed. I don't know why this beat was chosen. It It's just terrible. It's just bad, honestly. Um, Boom is, eh. It's, it's kind of more lame, really weird, aggressive music from him. Um, it, it, it just, it just, it has, it's kind of, it gets close to being fun, but it ends up kind of swerving back into being corny for me. Uh, Black Hearted is a rare highlight. I like this track. Um, I thought Polo had a kind of nice flow over it. I thought he was a little more tame on it. I like what it is. It's a little darker. The beat works nicer. I like it. Um, Broken Guitars could really just describe this entire, entire album. Uh, that's all I have to say on that track. Really nothing to say to me on that. Uh, give No Fuck, like I mentioned, is just bad aggressive. Just like, him like, oh, give no fuck. It's, it, it's just bad, man. It's just, it's just not good. Cause Polo is not Pop Smoke. He's not these rappers who can really be aggressive and it works. Polo just doesn't sound good when he's aggressive. I don't know why Moose is just specifically his vocal set. He just doesn't strike me as angry or fearful it's just kind of lame to me and it just sound it sounds like it just it's there's not whenever i listen to a really aggressive track i should feel a little threatened you know not like scared but like threatened i feel so i feel so little threatened on this track i would be more threatened by a kitten honestly than polo g being angry it doesn't work um go part one is a track by polo g featuring g herbo you've already heard the track <laughs> You've already, you already know what this is gonna be. And it's exactly that. The main takeaway I got from this track is that it's literally called Go Part 1 and there's not a Go Part 2. So, 
I okay. Look, you can. I get. I get. There are times where people call a track part one and part two, but usually when you call a track part one, it's because part two is on the album and it's built to coincide. There are times where you'll call a track to call a track just a name, and then the next one will be called part two. But that's because you didn't know the sequel is gonna be called. Nobody releases a movie with just the title one in it, like Avengers one. No, nobody does that. Like people release things. And then they do a sequel that adds to two onto it. Why is it called Go Part One if there's not a Go Part Two? Are they like teasing Go Part Two? Oh, it's coming soon because Go Part One was so great, even though it was just a very mediocre G Herbo Polo G track. I don't know. It really confuses me. I'm gonna think about that way too much, honestly. Um, this is a bad review, by the way. If I'm gonna review an album and I literally just criticize the name like that, really probably because there's nothing else interesting about the song other than that one um, fucking name. Uh, Heart of the Giant is nice though. I, I, this is a bit of a highlight for me. I liked the Rod Wave hook. The piano sounds kind of nice. By the way, whenever I say a track is a highlight on this, that doesn't mean I'm gonna revisit it a ton. It's just better than the other tracks. Um, uh, Zooted Freestyle is really could have been cut. I really have nothing to say. Just really could have been cut. Party Life um, is a pretty mediocre track. It's a pretty lame gangster we party track until the the baby verse comes on because the baby has no business being this great on this track. He murders it. It is the best thing on this whole album. He be, okay, DaBaby is one of my favorite feature artists out. Okay, Under the Sun, the What's Poppin' remix. Now, the, the man kills it. He's always so enjoyable on his features. Also, uh, Levitating, he's just such a fun artist when it comes to featuring, and he's so fun on this track. He gets aggressive, he gets fun, he gets wild. It's, it's a great part. It's the best thing on the whole album, honestly. He killed this verse. Um, Losses is a pretty mid Young Thug polo track. Am I the only one who feels like Young Thug could be doing so much better than this? It's just kind of add me like, like it's Young Thug. He's a great trap artist with polo G, so it kind of drags it down. But Young Thug doesn't really do anything to make it better. He's just kind of, <coughs> he just kind of Young Thugs it. And that's, it doesn't really make anything great out of it. Maybe my thing with Young Thug feeling kind of mid recently kind of came from Slime Language 2 being so mid, but I don't know, this could have been better for me. Um, so real is, oh my god, oh my god, it is so corny, it is, sorry, it is so corny, cheesy, uh, because it, not only is it a guitar beat, not only does he sing, but it's about a significant other. Now, I have no problem with rappers talking about significant others, but this is just bad, it's just so hard to take any of it seriously, I, honestly, this was like country levels of corny. Like the a genre, this was like on par with, okay, I could take country music more seriously. Like legitimately, if I went to listen to the new Luke Combs, oh, I don't know anything about country. If I were to listen to that, I probably would cringe less than I did at this one track. It It's rough. Um, Fame and Riches is the same, it's just bad, corny music. Um, For the Love of New York would be pretty mid, lame. But Nikki really saves it. She flows very nicely over it. I feel like she put more emotion into it. I think Nikki is obviously a great rapper. Um, I know people really hate on her a lot, but I think it's really lame to hate on her because I think she has, she's truly, really, not only is she influential, she has just a great flow and sound. Even though I don't love all her music, I, I just really respect her and I think she usually kills these features. And I thought she did great on this feature. Um, she fit very nicely over it. Um, um, she saved the track. Um, Clueless um, was a fun Pop Smoke uh, Vivio track. Once it, This is the second album that came out last night to have a second to last track be Pop Smoke, weirdly enough. Um, but it is, a, it is a nice track. I thought Vivio did great. I thought Pop did great. Surprisingly, Polo did pretty great. Yeah, it was a nice track. It wasn't as good as the one on uh, Culture 3, but I liked it, you know? Um, Bloody Canvas is a shockingly great conclusion. This was the best track on the album for me. This was solid as fuck. He, I, he told he he tells a story here, and it's legitimately captivating. This track proved to me Polo really knows how to close out an album with "Wishing for a Hero" in this. Great closings, um, despite the fact that there's a lot of mid on this album. This closing really did work for me. I thought it told a really nice story. Polo put emotion into it without keep bringing it to corniness. Because you can put emotion in thing. If I wasn't really on board with the story, it would have been corny. But I really get in. I really got like into the story, so it got investing, you know, and I didn't really take it in the corny way. Same way that I don't think Story by NF is a corny song. The whole Clouds album is really cheesy and corny, but that one track doesn't isn't that way because I got invested in the story with the way he's telling it. Same goes for Polo here. He actually tells it very well. 
Um, probably my favorite track from the album. Bloody Canvas is a solid ass ending, despite the fact that the beat isn't the best to me. As a whole, though, um, yeah, Hall of Fame uh, really kills my confidence for what the next Polo G stuff is going to be. It feels very just. I don't really know where to put it. It just, it just doesn't work for me. Um, the beats all are just the guitar piano beats just don't sound very nice to me. Polo doesn't have a really good flow over any of it. Um, there's very little emotion that I found interesting or at all, but it just as a whole, I think, I don't know if it's just really gonna, it just really worked for me. Um, I feel like my favorite part about this album is whenever it does work though, because the guitar emotional sound and when it doesn't veer off into cheesiness, which only happens like seven or eight times on the whole 20 track list album, it actually ends up being very nice. It works, but it happens too many times where he veers off into the cheesiness. And on top of that, all the times he tries to be aggressive or angry or just does something he's not capable at. Polo G just doesn't work for it. It's also a great example of somebody kind of moving backwards with the second album or third album. Um, this album doesn't feel like it's really advancing where the goat left off. He's not really going any new places. If anything, he's just doing, going backwards now. Even going like before Dial Legend and Quality for me, just uninteresting instrumentals, uninteresting flows. Just, there's very little, I, I will probably revisit the DaBaby verse on Party Life. Um, might revisit the verse on, for the Nikki verse on For the Love of New York. Might revisit Clueless and will revisit Bloody Gambus. But for 20 tracks, that's not a good selection. And a lot of those tracks get pretty bad, like Gang Gang and So Real and Fame and Riches and Give No Fuck. These not just bad, but like terrible tracks. Just like tracks that I would expect Polo G to be above of and not making. This album just, I really, it really, I, I, I didn't expect it to be good, but I'm disappointed it isn't. Cause I know Polo G is a very talented artist who's capable of this. He's a solid trap artist, but really these piano, instrumentals and everything he's been doing it, ju it just feels like he's not going forward and i feel the way about a lot of modern rappers lately that new megan the stallion single really proved to me she doesn't have anything anything else interesting she wants to offer us instead of this personality she's been doing for the past year and a half now like that good news album she's just gonna do that forever now. i don't know i mean i did apply that after one single but the single was incredibly uninteresting to me and if that's her next album i'm not interested by it uh, DaBaby is a really talented artist whom I think could be doing great, and I think he might end up doing great, but I feel like he just, his last films have just been really lacking in what he's good at. Um, Lil Baby, My Turn was terrible. Voice of the Heroes is still a highlight, and it still is hope for him, but he hasn't done a solid album solo on his own yet, in my opinion. Um, honestly, yeah, that, that's something I feel like has been happening with a lot of artists lately, but I was really hoping Polo G would really rise above that. As a whole, this album just, it doesn't work for me. I really found quite a lot to skip here. Honestly, I was pretty close to giving this a pretty negative rating, but there's enough on it for me to not give it a horrible rating. I'm gonna go with a C here. Um, would have much preferred to go up to, you know, B plus, maybe even get him to an A minus, but he, he just didn't handle this very well. Also just, it's kind of a mess too. Like it's way too long and there's a lot of tracks in this that just clutter it. It's a quite a messy album as well. Honestly, yeah, I was I was really hoping for better, but yeah, Hall of Fame is, you know, doesn't work, you know, pretty bad. Um, what do you guys think on this new Polo G? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Um, in the words Polo G, or not Polo G, of uh, Anthony Fantano, what would you rate it? I don't know how I got Polo G and Anthony Fantano mixed up. Don't question. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, peace out. Um, do I have anything else to say? Uh, this album is corn. Bye.